All right, folks, so here, are, this is the first of two videos that are going to cover uh, the requirements for uh, classifying fingerprints as loops. Um, looking at these three fingers, fingerprints, we can see that we have uh, clear representations of what would be considered uh, loops. If you remember uh, from earlier videos, we talked about the fact that there are three primary fingerprint patterns. Uh, arches, loops, and whorls. And if you remember, we mentioned that about 65% of all fingerprints are loops. So it's important that we therefore understand how to identify a loop as a loop. Um, by definition, a loop is that type of pattern in which one or more ridges enter upon either side, recurve, touch or pass an imaginary line between the delta and the core, and pass out or tend to pass out upon the same side the ridge enter. Uh, Notice uh, in the definition of loop, it says that ridges can enter upon either side and then they recurve. Uh, so if we look at our three fingerprints here, we can see that uh, loops can actually uh, come in from the left side and exit the left side, or they would be what we'd call left slanting loops. So the fingerprint here we can see comes in from the left and flows out the left, so it's a left slanting loop. Or we can have uh, loops that come in from the right and then uh, recurve and exit the right. So we have what are called right slanting loops. Later on, in our next video, we're going to talk about how uh, we classify loops as either radial or ulnar loops as opposed to simply right or left slanting. Uh, in terms of loops, um, as was already mentioned, uh, loops are patterns where the ridges tend to enter from one side of the fingerprint recurve and then exit the same side. Uh, more importantly, though, there are three essential elements that a fingerprint pattern must possess to be classified as a loop. Uh, if it's missing any of these three essential elements, it cannot be classified as a loop. So if it only has two of the three uh, elements, it's not a loop. Uh, those three elements are that the fingerprint pattern must have one sufficient recurve, or at least one good unspoiled recurve. Uh, a fingerprint must contain uh, one delta, and the fingerprint pattern must have uh, a ridge count of at least one that goes across at least one looping ridge. So all three of those characteristics must be present in a fingerprint for it to be classified as a loop. So let's look at some fingerprints. So let's look at this fingerprint. And then the question, of course, is, is this fingerprint a loop? Remember, there's three required elements. The fingerprint must have a sufficient recurve. It must have a delta and it must have a ridge count. Well, let's look closely at this fingerprint and we can see if it has those requirements. So looking at this fingerprint pattern, we can see that this fingerprint has ridges that tend to flow in from the left side. They recurve around, so they do this kind of U-turn, and then they, they flow back out the left side. So what we're seeing here is some ridges that recurve to the left or have a left slant. Now, the first thing we want to look at is does this fingerprint have at least one good unspoiled recurve? And so we can see, looking at this fingerprint, there are several ridges which do flow in from the left, recurve around, and flow out the left side. The question is, is at least one of those a good recurve or unspoiled? And if you remember, when we talked about the rules of unspoiled or sufficient recurves, remember that the recurve must not have any appendages that come off of the recurve between the two shoulders. So let's look and see if we have at least one good recurve here. Well, looking at the innermost recurve, which is this ridge here, uh, we can see that between the two shoulders there are no appendages there. So this recurve, this innermost one, is a sufficient recurve or an unspoiled recurve. Now, remember, if this one had been spoiled, we could just go to the next one out and see if it was, it was spoiled. Well, the innermost one in this case is an unspoiled recurve, so we do have a, a good unspoiled recurve. So then where's the core for this fingerprint? If you remember in our discussion of cores, um, the core uh, goes on the opposite shoulder of the recurving ridge unless there's a spike or an ending ridge in the middle of the fingerprint. Well, in this case, we do have a spike here, and this spike rises above the, the edges of the shoulder. So we're going to put our core right on the end of this spike or this ending ridge right here. So we have a sufficient recurve, and we've already identified our core as belonging here on the end of this spike. So what is the second requirement for a loop? Well, it must have a delta. And if you remember deltas, uh, delta is a point uh, near the area of, con of divergence of two type lines. And if you remember type lines, 
or ridges that travel roughly parallel to each other and then diverge. And if we look here on the right hand side of this fingerprint, we can see that there's a ridge here that as it's traveling along suddenly diverges upwards. And there's another ridge here which is traveling roughly parallel to the other one and it diverges downwards. And so we have these two type lines, type line one, type line two, and we can see that they diverge. And so we, our delta would be found right here at that point of divergence. So our delta is going to be located right there. So we found our, our recurve and we found our core and we found our delta. And if you remember, the third requirement of a loop is it must have at least a ridge count of one. So if we were to draw an imaginary line between the core and the delta, that imaginary line must cross at least one ridge. So there's our delta, as we have uh, already determined. And there's our core. And then if we put an imaginary line between them, we can see in this fingerprint that that imaginary line actually crosses several ridges. In fact, it crosses... 16 of them. If you want to count them, you can go ahead and do that. But it definitely crosses 16 ridges. So this fingerprint is definitely a loop. It's a left slanted loop. And it has a ridge count of 16. That ridge count is important later on when we talk about doing uh, what is called a Henry classification on a group of fingerprints. Well, let's look at another print. This print. So the question is, is this print a loop? Well, again, what are the three requirements? It must have a good, unspoiled, sufficient recurve. It must have a delta, and it must have a ridge count. So looking here, we can see that there are a couple of ridges that flow in from the left and flow out from the left. So again, we have this left slanting recurving ridges. We can see that the innermost one, we can see that it is unspoiled. So we have a good, unspoiled recurve here. And since there's no spike in the middle, we're going to put our core on the opposite shoulder away from the delta. All right, our delta, here we have a type line traveling parallel, another type line traveling parallel. We can see that they diverge, and so we're going to put our delta right here. All right, so if we place our delta and our core, and then we draw an imaginary line. Now remember, when we're doing ridge count, we don't include the core or the delta in the count. So if we draw an imaginary line between the core and the delta, besides the core and the delta, we can see that that imaginary line crosses two ridges. So we can see that this fingerprint definitely is a loop because it does have a sufficient recurve. It does have a delta. And when we draw an imaginary line between those two, we do have a ridge count of at least two. So this is also a loop. All right, let's look at another fingerprint. Let's look at this fingerprint. All right, so again, what are our three requirements? Sufficient recurve, delta, ridge count. All right, what's the first one we're going to look at is sufficient recurve. All right, now looking at this fingerprint, unlike some of the other ones we've looked at, there's really only one ridge that actually flows in, recurves around, and flows back out. So all these other ones just kind of arch over across the top. There's only just the one ridge that recurves around. And unfortunately, when we look at this ridge, this one is not a sufficient recurve because it's been spoiled because it has this appendage right here attached to it. So right away, we can see that this fingerprint is not going to be a loop because it doesn't have all three required elements. It's missing the sufficient recurve part. So this one's a lot of loop. So then the question is, what is it? If it's not a loop, what is it? Because this fingerprint does have a delta. It does have a, it does have a recurve, but it's spoiled. So it's almost a loop, but we can't call it a loop. So what do we call it? Well, whenever we have a fingerprint that's almost a loop, we're going to, by default, refer to it as a tented arch. And we're going to talk about arches a little bit more later on. But for now, at least, I'm going to bring up any fingerprint that is not quite a loop, it's missing one of the requirements, is going to automatically be identified as, as a tented arch. Uh, a looping type tented arch possesses two of the three characteristics of a loop pattern, but is missing one of the other ones. So for example, if we look at this pattern here, we can see that it has a, a sufficient recurve here. Right? And so since there's not a, a spike in the middle, we'd put our core here on the opposite shoulder. Here is our type line and our type line, but because there's no other dot or bifurcation there, we'd have to put our delta right on this recurve. And if we were to draw a straight line or an imaginary line between the delta and the core, we would see that there is no ridge count. So this fingerprint does have a delta, and it does have a recurve, but it doesn't have a ridge count. So this one would not be a loop. This one would be a tented arch. Or we might have a fingerprint where maybe it's spoiled. Um, if we have a, a spoiled recurve, for example, and we did have a delta, 
um, then uh, because it has a spoiled recurve, it's missing one of those three requirements. So by default, it automatically then becomes a tented arch. All right, so this is the end of video one on classifying loops. Make sure you tune, tune in and watch uh, video two, which is going to talk about how to determine whether a fingerprint is an ulnar or a radial loop.